Takže dobrý večer a jménem Národního pedagogického institutu vás vítám na dnešním webináři Having fun with writing stories, který je realizován v rámci projektu SIPO. Um, anyway, so I'd like to start with, uh, I mean, what, what, I, what I'd like to do is just share with you my experience with writing stories. And uh, whenever we actually write stories in classes, in my classes, I, I, as I said, I uh, I teach, well, I didn't say, but like uh, the students that I teach stories to are usually uh, from B1 to C, C1. So a relatively, relatively advanced students. So I'll be talking about experience, my experience teaching these students. And obviously you may teach students who maybe may have maybe uh, lower language skills. So, uh, well, uh, if we have time and you ask questions, maybe we could talk about how uh, how to adopt it to uh, to to your students. But I, I think I think the method or the, the way I teach it is uh, applicable to almost all students, I would say. But uh, anyway, so so when I actually teach it to my students, when, when we teach, uh, when we actually talk about story writing, surprisingly enough. Um, Students are quite actually excited about it. Uh, they have fun uh, with it, uh, regardless of the of the time when we do it, whether it's in the afternoon and how tired they are, and they actually have, have uh, lots of we have lots of fun with it. Now the, the the reason we have fun is because I we don't really write a lot. And we do write, but at the end, and and this is what I'm going to talk about when when we actually talk about uh, stories. When we actually, when I walk into the classroom and I tell students we're going to write stories, well, you know, they they look pretty frustrated, dejected, uh, downcast, you know, because you know my experience is that nobody really likes writing so much, and uh, maybe you have the same kind of experience with your students when you say, okay, well, today we're going to do some writing, we're going to write stories, and uh, maybe your students feel the same way. So, um, you know, and, and let's face it, not many of us actually are really so keen on writing. That doesn't mean that we don't write, we write. But, uh, but uh, the way I actually teach it is actually uh, through speaking. We do a lot of uh, storytelling. And uh, so maybe I can, if I can uh, show you the first slide. Uh, okay, so uh, when, when I talk about story writing, um, I kind of think about it in terms of versus storytelling, because when, when you talk about story, when, when we're talking about telling stories, um, I think that everybody loves telling stories. I mean, we spend most of our lives telling stories to each other. Um, so, you know, so um, so um, when, 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 we, uh, when I think of story writing, I usually, rather than telling students we're going to write story, I, I say, let's let's talk about stories because I believe that we all kind of love telling stories. We like sharing stories with, you know, our closest, with friends, um, with our families, colleagues. Uh, we love sharing. We share our experiences, joy, sadness, fears and dreams and failures. And um, so, we tell stories and and when we actually translate it to writing i, I always kind of uh, try to make students feel comfortable by explaining to them that because like when i hear you're going to write you know if somebody says to me you're going to write a story imagine imagine if i said now let's let's write a story i mean right now let's write a story how would you feel i don't know about you but i would feel a little bit stressed and imagine if i say okay well and then uh well let's write the story and then i'll assess it well, then I become even more stressed. So um, in, in, instead, I, I say, okay, well, what we're we going to do, okay, sure, we're going to write a story, but the story is, like when you think about it, I don't know how long stories you write, but my students write from about 150 words to 220 words, which are 250 words, and which is very, very, very short story. So, you know, when you say we're going to write a story, students think, oh, OK, this is going to be we got, got to write something, you know, something very complicated. The story is going to be like, you know, something professional. And I tell them, look, what we really I mean, with with this, this amount of words, uh, it's, it's going to be something very simple. 
I mean, it's going to be very, very, very short story. In fact, it's more like an anecdote. So, um, so I tell tell students like you know, uh, think about the anecdotes. Uh, anecdote. When I mean anecdote, is something like you know, when you when you go, I, I tell students when you go, imagine you go for a coffee. I don't know where, where you meet. You meet with friends, and and then you sit down and say, well, guess what happened to me today. And you tell something that happened to you, and uh, and this way we share the stories. And I find that uh, students are quite, yeah, everybody's quite excited about telling, you know, talking about our experiences. So I try to put students into this mode of sharing, uh, sharing some information about themselves. So rather than starting with story writing, we start with storytelling, and uh, and um, so. Um, of course, the, the the final outcome is writing because that's what we do. That's what we do. Uh, we we want to teach students how to write, how to write their good stories. But as I said, I, I usually start with the with the speaking, and I spend a fair bit of time. So um, anyway, well, these are the contents of this is kind of a bit of an introduction. So uh, th these are the contents of uh, of the web, uh, webinar of the of the of the seminar. So. Uh, first, usually when I start talking and when we start, actually, when we have a lesson uh, which is about stories, well, we, we do the picture stories where I provide pictures. We will go through all these sections today. So I actually come up with pictures, take them from the Internet. You know, I, I have an idea of the story or, or the pictures that could be useful that will generate the discussion, class class discussion. So I get these story, uh, these pictures, and we talk about these pictures. Then the next step is that we brainstorm uh, brainstorm topics. Um, rather than giving students the topics, like assigning them one topic and say, okay, now you got to write about this, and then. You know, they may freeze, they may, um, you know, get stuck because they don't know what to say about it. What we do in class, we actually generate topics that are relevant and uh, relevant to their lives. In fact, uh, it's not me, it's them who ge uh, who generates the topic. So, uh, so that they're, they're close to, to their hearts. And then what we do, uh, we actually, I split the, the, the class into teams, pairs, teams, groups, and they actually tell each other stories. They pick, of course, uh, a topic from the from the from the topics that they actually brainstorm, and then they actually tell each other uh, the story. Then, well, they actually prepare. So within the team, they prepare the story. They think about it. They select it. Then they prepare it. Then we actually share it in the in the class, so that um, you know, so that we can uh, we can all all hear different stories but but also it it serves the purpose of um uh, learning and uh, I'll, I'll discuss it when we come to this section then we actually start talking about writing strategies this is the language that is necessary uh, the things that uh, the students need to think about when they actually write and then uh, again, we're not really writing individually as yet. We actually write in teams because I find I find it that um, uh, in in my case, I don't know in your cases. Of course, everybody's got different uh, students and you know different groups. And but but for me, uh, students work much much better in pairs and in teams. And in fact, uh, most of my lessons are done as much as possible in pairs or teams because I feel that. Uh, students are, are more active when they're actually working this way and they and being active they're learning more i believe and then we actually share the stories when we write them our, our students have laptops so they actually type them on the laptop and then we we plug it to the data projector and we read those stories and when we read those stories well we actually can give feedback and uh i think this is quite valuable and once all this is done uh usually students are very comfortable and they, you know, they 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 feel comfortable with what's what's happening. They they know pretty well what they need to be doing, and then they start writing their own individual uh, uh, stories. Okay, so so this is this is the content, and the first part I can't see it here. Okay, I have my presentation here is picture stories. Okay, so with the picture stories, um, um, just um. 
Yeah, well, with the, with the picture stories, basically what, what happens is that um, uh, I, uh, I come up with stories, as I said, for example, um, this kind of picture, okay? You can see a burning house. And we go through sets of, sets, sets of pictures. You'll, you'll, you'll see, uh, I have about 10 pictures here. And uh, so you'll see, see uh, what we do with it. But, but what we do is I'll put this on a projector and students see this, this picture. And then I encourage them to think about the story. Okay, what is actually happening here? Okay, and um, so I try to encourage them to create usually as many stories as possible but i i ask them this is this is done in in, in uh, class so that everybody starts throwing ideas is what's happening i mean obviously clearly everybody sees that it's a house that's burning okay but the story could be from uh, taken from different angle it could be uh there could be loads of different stories now students usually when we start when they see the picture uh, of course i have some classes which are more communicative I have classes which are less communicative. So the classes that are more communicative, of course, you know, the it, it flows. You know, they start throwing ideas, they're coming up with some silly ideas, with some good ideas. I, you know, with brainstorming, I don't stop them unless they come up with something uh, which is not, which is inappropriate. But otherwise, everything's fine. You know, this is to get them really worked up, you know, and excited. And, but in classes where, you know, and I do have classes with students, like, you know, they just look at the picture and say, oh, we don't know, I don't know what's going on. So I have, I, I start them off with uh, questions like, you know, what is, what do you think is the picture about? Okay, what do you think happened here? How did the fire start? Okay, why did it happen? Who are the people involved in this story? Okay. Are the people actually owners? Are they onlookers? How, I actually, how are they actually related to the whole story? Okay. And then more questions like, I've got them written down here so I can read them like, you know, like, did this happen to someone they know? Were they able, are we talking about the people? Were they able to help to stop the fire? Did anyone get hurt? Is there anything they could have done differently? How do they feel? Did it really happen? Or is it just fiction? Okay, so they all, you know, I ask them these questions and students think about it and we just throw ideas. And then what I, what I, what I do is I usually try to, we, we go through sets of these pictures and as we go through them, students, you know, they lose their in, inhibitions. They, they really start becoming more excited in some groups. Of course, there are groups where students are not so excited, but still they come up with some ideas. But I always encourage them. Sometimes they come up with real horror stories, you know, like with decapitated bodies and, you know, bloody gory stuff. But sometimes they come up with, uh, you know, sensible stories. But as I said, like at this, at this stage, it's not so important what, the, what they're saying as long as they're saying it and they're really getting into it. They get excited and they get motivated to really talk about this. But anyway, um, uh, what happens then, I actually try to uh, make them think about how would they define the story that this picture portrays, okay, in one, one sentence. And um, I call them one-liners. Somewhere you could call, uh, somebody might call them like topic sentences. But it's, it's a sentence which would really define what's going on. And I always try to uh, get them to come up with as many as possible because, you know, each story, uh, each picture could be uh, narrated from various perspectives. And uh, so, you know, so I, I ask them to, to come up with as many. Sometimes they have maybe one, sometimes they have two, sometimes they have five and more. OK, so I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example uh, with this picture, for example. So the one-liner would be, and, and this, these one-liners, as I read them, you'll see that they're really talking about a completely different story, although the, the picture uh, is, is, is the same. And so, so you know, I, I try to, like, uh, show it to the students that, you know, they can be quite creative and that there's, there is not just one story, yeah, uh, so that they're not kind of uptight about, like, you know, I have to come up with the 
story. There is no the story. There are just many. So, for example, you could be thinking of, like when you see this picture, okay, you could be thinking of, well, it was thanks to Paul's quick thinking that his neighbor's house did not burn down. That could be one. Okay. Or another one could be, for example, the New, York, uh, the New Year's party gone wrong when teenagers were left home alone. As you can see, these are completely two different stories. Okay, or I have a one more example. As I said, I have three examples. The best marketing strategy for selling smoke alarms. Again, if I were to write a story about this with this picture, that would be a different story. Now, I like these one-liners uh, because I believe that, you know, if they get the right one-liner, uh, which actually is you know, um, attracting attention and, uh, you know, doesn't, doesn't actually reveal too much, um, it's a perfect opening to the story. And so, so this is why we train it, so that they have nice way kind of getting into the story that then they, uh, that they narrate. So now what I'd like us to do, I know there are a lot, lot of us, and I, I, as I said, I, I can't really, I can't see you. I, I'm just talking to the screen, so I feel a little bit crazy today. But, uh, but what I'd like us to do is I'll, we'll go through, through some of the pictures, but I'd like you maybe try these one-liners. This is another picture that I show my students. And again, there could be a whole lot of stories uh, about this picture. You know, this could like uh, kind of, you know, you could come up with a lot of stories. Now, I will actually open chat. I hope I will be able to open it. And I would really like if you uh, could maybe think of one-liners. You know, what, what do you think this story is about? Yeah, for, for just a couple of minutes. That would be nice if you could write in a chat. Someone dropped the key in a desert. Very good. Okay. As I said, no, no, no sentence is wrong. You can't go wrong. OK, so um, I urge you to try it, OK, because try your story. They got lost in the desert. Very good. OK, what else could this story be about? About losing the car key in a trip. Yes. But actually, the reason I have this photo is because it actually happened to me. I actually went swimming with a car key and I drowned it. OK. Oh, OK. Oh, OK. 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 All right. I can't see. Yeah. OK, fine. I can see some. Find your new car, yes. A murder in a desert. A murder in desert. Yes, kidnapping. Nice day. We could have. A, yeah, what a nice day it could have been. Yeah, okay. I can see that there's quite a lot of ideas. There is a yeah, key card. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, a, a key lost to short a prior. John got a present. He just has to find it. Fantastic. Okay, that's, that's really, really nice. About losing the car key and see and while fishing about importance of a key. Yes, too drunk to drive his girlfriend. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, see, and this is exactly what the students do. And um, I don't know if you're excited about it. Maybe you're not, but they're, they're these fabulous ideas. And, and students come up with these ideas, okay? And, you know, once, once somebody starts, you know, it's just snowballs. You know, the usually students trying to outdo themselves. Um, you know, probably your students are similar to mine. I have mainly boys because this is IT school. So they're trying to outdo each other and come up with the more ludicrous idea and the more ludicrous, the better. So anyway, but but I don't stop them because I think it is important. OK, it is, I'll, I'll be talking, but I'll show you other pictures. And of course, you come up with your own or I don't know how. how uh, hang on, I'll see if I can. Yeah, okay, so I think this, this story, everybody everybody knows what's going on, okay? History test F, you know, failing. Oh, this is a nightmare to students when they see this, okay? So they come up with brilliant stories. Um, I think this happens to students all the time, you know, they miss their bus. They say, oh, no, I just saw the picture and I thought it was nice. So uh, usually also some interesting stories come up. This is obviously about injury. Maybe having row with a friend. This one was just cute, so I I I, I just copied it and and students liked it. Though we did not generate many many stories. I think again, you know, winning some trophy or winning tournament or you know success achievement. This is really nice. It's actually found by my son, so that was a really nice one. We we all like cats, so 
and you know so you you see this picture and and you think okay well what's happening how did the cat get there you know is it going to fall is somebody going to rescue and you've got a story already going on okay so that was that that that's the first part this is this is for them for me to warm them to warm them up okay and then uh as i said we brainstorm ideas okay we brainstorm the topics uh the reason for this is um uh, well, there are actually two reasons. Um, one reason is uh, so that uh, the, the the topics actually are closer to, to their lives. Okay, so again, I emphasize, think about them as just, a, you know, something you'd be telling your friend. Okay, in, in our cases, we adults imagine you're going to, I don't know, to pub with your friend or maybe to a cafe, you drink wine and you say, you wouldn't believe what happened to me today. Okay, what would you be talking about? And obviously what I would be talking about might be slightly different to what students might be talking about. So this is why I, I again ask them to come up with the topics themselves, okay? So they become authentic, relevant to them. Um, usually, sometimes I have to actually come up with the first ones, but you'll see that they copy also the pictures sometimes, okay? so. Here we go. No, going on. My presentation got stuck. Here we go. Okay, so you have, for example, three. I fail the English test again. We had failing, I think, history there. I have to get a part-time job. I saw a car accident. Okay, so these are some of them. Okay, I could ask you to come up with more, but I'm just looking at time, and uh, time is going quicker than I expected. So I'll, I'll show you some more, okay? So these are the ones, and a lot of these actually what the students came up themselves. So I actually, we do this again as a class activity. Uh, it depends how much time we have uh, and how much time I want to alloc allocate. So sometimes we do it as a class activity. I write them on the whiteboard. They they screen them at me. Sometimes I, I, I ask them to work in teams and, uh, you know, in teams, uh, they come up with some ideas and then I get, uh, team uh, like a like a, uh, a student from each team to come and write maybe three or four. You can see some more here. As you can see, they're pretty simple, simple, simple uh, topics, and then also very ambiguous. Ambiguous. I, I try to keep them as ambiguous as possible, as wide as possible, so that you know you can basically write almost anything, um, so that students have you know wider possibility for their imagination. So, but as I said, again, um, you know, it's mainly students. These are mainly students' ideas. And then the next step, uh, the next obvious step is once we have this, is, well, team storytelling. Now, you know, it's up to you how you do it. And, you know, you probably have your own ways of doing this, which really works in, it works uh, well in, uh, all the ways that work well in, in your, in your uh, classes. Uh, but for me, as I said, um, you know, I'm really big on team uh, because um, so many times I walked into the class and I can see that the students are dead, literally dead. They're tired. They had maths test, physics test, whatever test. And then English comes, you know, and it's like, you know, I don't know, two o'clock, three o'clock in the afternoon. And they'd rather be somewhere else. But once I put them into teams, the energy changes in the classroom. Um, and so this is why I like doing things in teams. Plus, there are other benefits, added benefits. And uh, these obviously are that the students help each other. OK, you have a weaker student. You have a more advanced student. I like to mix them up. The way I, I break uh, students into teams varies from class to class. Sometimes I ask them to, you know, they, to form their own, own teams. This is when I, you know, when I know this is going to work. Sometimes I know in, in particular classrooms, I know it wouldn't work because the strong students stick together and the weak students stick together. And then, you know, the weak students and sit and do nothing, whereas the works, uh, the, 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 the more advanced students work really well. So I try to mix them up sometimes just for the fun of it. I give them random pictures and they have to, which sort them like, you know, in, into teams. So I don't know, imagine like uh, the pictures would have four pictures of bananas, let's say, but I usually use like uh, 
superheroes because they like superheroes. So I would use pictures of, uh, you know, characters from, from Avengers, for example, and you would have four Hulks and then you would have four, I don't know, Iron Mans and, and, you, I randomly give these pictures, and they have to find them. That they have to find their, their members, so that that's that's done randomly. But as I said, it really depends from class to class. So I believe that they help each other, and this is why I really uh, like them working in teams. And they're also more comfortable than than if they do it individually. Um, I think that uh, they're less likely. Definitely, they're less likely to be afraid to make mistakes especially when they present. If they present it for themselves and they present it as a team, uh, they may have a spokesperson. Sure, somebody likes to speak more than others, but I still think it doesn't really matter because like uh, usually all students have some input in it. If I see that there are some students that are not putting input or not working, uh, I come and tell them, you know, uh, try to motivate them, but... Uh, sometimes it doesn't work. So if it doesn't work, um, you know, I put them in different different teams. If it doesn't work, still, um, even if they're passive and they see what the others are doing, I still think that they, they, they're learning more than if uh, they were alone because sometimes they've lost and they do nothing. And, and as you know, again, with, uh, with your students too, you have some students that will never work no matter what you do. So that that happens, but 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 uh, but overall, most students work quite well. They all obviously are more open and and I think more spontaneous when they're working in team, and and they 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 drive each other. You know, there's, the energy is different than if you're working on your own, and then you get stuck and you can't think of anything. You know, being in a team, you know, uh, I I feel that the, the energy is completely different. The learning is also different. Okay, and obviously they have more fun. So they definitely. Uh, these are the the, the, the benefits I, I see in in team working. Okay, so um, and then then once so once they in the team, obviously they uh, um, they they pick. Uh, um, sorry, I just <laughs> a little bit got lost where I am. Uh, where, uh, I think yes. So so what what they're doing now is they're working in team. They pick a story. They decide on the story from uh, on the topic that they actually generated through brainstorming. So now they actually are telling the stories, or they they preparing the they preparing the story. They're, they're sitting in a in a team and they're talking. They they think okay, well we're going to talk about the burning house, for example, and then what's happening, and they they formulate the story. Once once they have done that, we move to the next part okay and that's sharing stories this is still 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 kind of oral this is not a lot of writing we do a bit of writing here and there they may write a few points because they then they share the stories in class they, they still sit where they are you usually don't ask them to come forward to to the to the you know to, uh, uh, to the whiteboard or something they sit where they are and they just try to narrate the story that they have come up with. The reason why we do this is because, uh, you know, we're learning from each other. Uh, the, the first part, they're actually learning within a small team, maybe three. I usually like to break the teams to about maximum four students because if you have bigger, then you have uh, sometimes that some students really don't work. Uh, if you have just two, that's okay as well, but I, I, I prefer three, four. So, and then it will, when we're sharing it in class, well, the whole class is listening to individual stories and we can learn from, uh, from each other, uh, from, uh, from uh, yeah, well, from, uh, you know, the, they can inspire each other through the stories, but they can, we can also learn from the different shortcomings, okay? We can think about whether we like the story that they're talking about because, well, the next point is feedback. And that is, I think, very important. The feedback, uh, we'll come to feedback twice here, uh, but feedback for me is very important because, and not my feedback. In fact, I really, really take the back seat. I try not to give any feedback at this stage. 
maybe a little, maybe just encouragement that I really liked it or something like that. But I really prefer if the students actually give the feedback uh, because firstly, they learn to uh, become more independent. They also uh, think more about the story. I mean, I tell them, okay, did you like the story? If you liked it, why did you like it? What was it that you liked about it? Okay, and they tell each other and, and they're helping each other. And I think again, if I actually take the back seat and stay as invisible as possible, I think uh, because then then the students don't wait for my comments. Very often, uh, if you start talking, uh, students stop. At least my experience is students stop and they wait and they wait for me to tell them what was good and what was not good. But I prefer if they actually you know think about what was good and what was not good because from that they they actually learn and it helps them with their own stories. So um, okay, but if if nobody's saying anything, of course, I step in and 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 start you know like try to encourage them but uh but i prefer not to say much here i prefer students and students know whether they like it and they don't like it but if everybody claps and says it's fantastic and you know it's fantastic of course i step in and tell them where you know the shortcomings or what were the weaknesses and how they can improve the story but of course also this way public speaking i know some students are more likely to speak Others will be more afraid, but here they speak in front of peers. I think, you know, it's a great opportunity to do so. Okay, now we go to writing strategies. So, so this is a lot of talking, but like when, when we do this, and it doesn't have to take very long, uh, but usually students are kind of like feel quite comfortable about it all and then we start talking about the nitty gritty and i really don't want to don't want to start normally with this because if i start with this and i've i tried in in some classes when i start really with writing strategies i start speaking and students you can see their eyes and students go like either their eyes go like this they switch off or they start you know fiddling with the mobile phones but once once we have this you know, then we say, okay, what are the writing strategies? And they usually, because they already came up with them as they were giving feedback, when we had the one-liners, they already know for a bit, you know. So the first, of course, we talk about structure, okay? And with structure or, or layout, okay, uh, well, it is, they, they understand, or by now, they should understand why it is important to have the, the, the first sentence because it grabs the reader's attention, you know, uh, it, it sparks the curiosity. Yeah, very often, if you don't, like, I, I know some of the stories when we, when we didn't do this, students would start writing and you have no idea where they are, where they're going to, and the story is boring. Whereas if they have the one-liners, you know, it draws the, the, the reader into, into the story quite quickly. And they kind of understand this, some of them, some of them, of course, not. But, uh, but anyway, so, uh, so we discussed, okay, you know, uh, that we have the introduction and why it is important. Uh, then uh, we also talk about the body, the main part, which obviously clearly develops the story and then we also talk about conclusion and uh, you know that you know the story is concluded sometimes with like a moral lesson sometimes there is a surprising twist but you know the the, the usual stuff okay so um okay so again um uh, then then uh, so so this we actually talk about fair bit earlier here it's more like the formal way of talking about it so that it's formalized now they go okay yeah yeah so how it works and then then comes the kind of the most boring part i would say and that's language okay so obviously when we're writing stories i explain to students as you do that we need to use narrative tenses okay um, so usually my students know uh, past simple past continuous quite well relatively well so we don't have to uh, emphasize a lot of uh, this grammar but you know i say okay well when you think about past simple past simple is really used in the story to kind of move the story forward in kind of chronological order uh, whereas past simple is uh, more about descriptive so it describes what was happening in a moment of time so um uh, so this really don't have to talk too much about it. If you have uh, students that are lower 
you know, the, the language is a little bit lower than, than obviously you practice. This is the time when you probably want to practice these um, past simple, past continuances. Uh, and, uh, oh, hang on. <laughs> okay. And then uh, I always uh, think that uh, with my students, because as I said, the level is B1 to C1, I expect them to use uh, past perfect in, in my, my stories because I feel uh, it should be in the stories. So we, we talk about past perfect. Uh, if um, I have like B1s, then we don't spend too much time doing it. If we have B, B2, C1, uh, we go to past perfect, simple, past perfect, continuous. It really depends from class to class. Uh, but, you know, with sometimes past perfect is difficult. I mean, some students have problems with present perfect, as you know. So so I, I kind of tell them how easily they can kind of put in past perfect into their story. And I do it by by uh, telling them that really the, the key word is because. Because once you use in past because and you need to explain something because something had happened earlier, well, then you, you, you're going to throw in past perfect. So so here I, for example, tell them, for example, I draw a picture of a girl or a boy. So here we have a girl. She could be happy. She could be sad, whatever. And I write something like Anichka is sad. Well, Anichka is sad. If well, That would be if we were talking present perfect. So it should be Anichka was sad. So I'm sorry, that's my mistake. And then I say to students, okay, I write because. Anichka was sad because why? And well, sometimes they come up with the ideas. Sometimes they don't. So. I say, for example, because she had lost her mobile phone. And then I practice a little bit more with students and I tell them, okay, well, why else? Why else was Anjka sad? And, you know, and they may come up with more examples. Okay, I've got some written down here. So, for example, she had uh, she had cut a finger, for example, or she had she'd had a row with a friend or her team had lost, but they, they you know, they come up with these and I ask them in, uh, you know, I asked them, individual students to come up with one of those. If I want to practice a little bit more, I can come up with more situations. Somebody was bored, somebody was frightened because, and this way I get them at least to, especially the weaker students, to remember how past perfect is used. Of course, before I do this, we discuss the how it is formed. So I make sure that they know it's formed with had plus past participle. Okay, and um, so so this is what I expect. Of course, we also talk about in uh, you know uh, direct speech and stuff, but um, I think we all do that. And um, and then uh, then I usually spend a fair bit of time talking about descriptors and intensifiers and how uh, that they play a key role in storytelling because we want people to sympathize with us and um, so we need the stories to come alive and that's the function of descriptors and intensifiers. Uh, they make our language more colorful so we need colorful adjectives appropriate adverbs that intensify the actions because without them uh, the story becomes quite flat so uh, we practice we practice these um, in different ways uh, so uh, yeah some uh, well you know for example for example the way the way I, uh, so obviously we're talking about adverbs and adjectives and uh, uh, what I usually do especially especially with the more advanced classes, I tell them this, like, you know, when I prepare for FC or CA, I tell them that in their stories or in their writing, you know, uh, words like good plus bad equals sad. It's kind of equation that they know. And uh, in other words, what I'm trying to tell them is, look, don't use words like good. Don't use words like bad, because really at this level, it's sad. If you have students that are below B1, of course, you're happy if they use these words. But if, if you have students that are of a higher level, then, you know, I expect them to do better than that. And so what we do uh, in class, uh, come up with a whole sort of set of words that then we think of uh, synonyms. So, for example, if we're thinking of good, well, we could be thinking of something like superb, outstanding, brilliant. And I get a student to come to whiteboard and they write it. If I have time, uh, we do it as a pair work or teamwork. If we don't have much time, we do it as a kind of like brainstorming together. Uh, I try not to uh, uh, not to say, uh, not to actually call out any of these. I start them off, but try again be as passive as possible because I really want them to come up with the ideas. 
if they work in teams. So, so uh, the examples I've got them here written down. So would have, for example, good, bad, bad could be like atrocious, terrible, awful. You know, so they come up with with these ideas. But um, I would have, so for example, I would have good. I would have bad. I would have, uh, for example, important, boring, say, walk, look. Uh, you know, and and they would they would uh, I would ask students to come up with the ideas. Now, ooh, we're running out of time. Okay, so um, so I think you get the gist. Okay, they come up with the uh, with those words, and uh, when they're not many, I ask them to use thesaurus because I feel use mobile phones, use thesaurus, not check, check, check English, but it, use English, English with thesaurus. They put bad and they've get, they get like, I don't know, maybe 10 possibilities uh, because I feel that if I tell them, all they do is sit and listen. Whereas if they have to search those words in thesaurus, well, they are more active than uh, just sitting and listening. Okay. Also with the, with when we are actually talking about the adjectives and, and adverbs, it's probably good time to talk about gradable and un, uh, and non-gradable or ungradable adjectives, extremes and non-extremes, and you know the adverbs that go with them. Uh, that's uh, also something that I usually do. Working in teams, I think. Oh, okay, so there's nothing there. So working in team, uh, writing in teams. Now is the time when they have, okay, they talked about the stories, they're comfortable about, about those stories, they've generated the topics that they will be writing about or would be writing about. Then we've got some language discussed. This is the time that they start writing. Again, in my experience, I prefer if they write in teams. They start with teams because, again, they learn from each other, okay? This is the this is same thing as I talked about earlier, so I don't really want to go over it because the time is really running out, but like you get the idea. They work in teams. Then the most important part is when we share it. Uh, they write it on the computer, they get it on a data projector, and we read the stories. And here, uh, we actually, we give feedback. Firstly, do we have the one-liners? Is, is it really getting us into the story? Do, do we, you know, are we, are we really interested to read the story? The story has logical progression. Uh, Conclusion, is it okay? Do we have uh, the right tenses uh, there? Because sometimes students use uh, present perfect, you know, in a story, unless it's a quote, it's got nothing to do in it. Then we also look at, and these are the, you know, the, the intensifiers and stuff. I mean, if you have a sentence, for example, you know, he ate um, good soup or, you know, he ate, you know, we would look at it and try to make it more complex. So again, I try, if anything, I pinpoint the ideas or I pinpoint uh, where we could improve it, but I get students, again, the whole class to come up with their ideas and, and think how they can improve it, okay? So feedback here is very important for me. Uh, sharing stories and feedback. Aha, that's, I'm sorry, so I maybe skipped that. Okay, so this is right. They write it. Of course, they write it in teams. Sharing stories. How do they, so we, I always ask them, how did they like the story? What they liked, what they didn't like? Uh, would they? Uh, what would they change to improve it? And obviously, is the language adequate? So these are the things that uh, I talked about. And then after this, I think they're pretty. They they pretty know what what's going on. Comes the individual writing. Okay. Of course, this really depends on what classes you have. If I have fourth graders that are preparing for maturita, individual writing sometimes comes quicker. If I if I teach, for example, when I teach first graders, sometimes we don't do individual writing at all. We just talk about it and talk about it and write it in teams once, write it in teams two times, have fun, and you know, and and general slowly get into it. But when 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 I'm in uh, fourth grade, we write stories maybe three or four times individual uh, because this is something that will be in maturita. So I want them to have perfect stories. Now, the most important thing about individual writing, from my perspective, is assessment, okay? And obviously, everybody's got different view on how to assess. For me, uh, I usually don't care so much about the grades. I really want them to get it right. So very often, I actually return. If, if the story is not up to scratch, I return it back to students, underline, tell them how to improve it, and try to get them improve it. Of course, if you have a student that neglects his or her work, uh, nothing nothing helps, but this is what I do. I don't worry so much about spelling. I don't worry a little bit about grammar. Of course, if I want them to use uh, narrative tenses, I want to see them there. But like spelling, the, you know, articles, um, the, you know, 
I don't care so much about at this stage, maybe later, but, uh, you know, at this stage, I really, really want them to write the perfect story. Look, I, uh, I don't know if there's anything else I can really say. Uh, uh, I'm sorry if I spoke fast, but I was trying to squeeze it all in. Uh, maybe I forgot because I've got lots of notes and I didn't really have much time to read through the notes. But uh, look, I, I think I think uh, I said quite a lot. So, um, all right. So now is probably time for you to ask questions. Um, if it all made sense, didn't make sense, you probably do it the same way. If you do it differently and you want to make comment how you do it and that works better than this, that would be probably good. So we all can learn. Would you share your presentations with all the attendees? Thank you. So that's probably fixed about the importance of a key. Yeah, okay, okay. I'm just reading the uh, the section in questions and answers. Okay, hello, could you send us uh, your super presentation, please? Well, thank you for that, but uh, I'm sure you will, uh, the, the presentation will be available. Okay, um, to all of you, hello, could you share your presentations? Yeah, okay, so some of you could not see the presentation. Look, there was not a lot in the presentation, but the presentation will be available to you. So don't worry if you miss something. But um, I, I think that, um, yeah. Okay, so are there any questions? Would you like to ask any questions that uh, I've not mentioned or something that I haven't mentioned, something that you'd like to, or maybe your feedback, maybe something you'd like to share with us. I'm sorry, I'm not really in, in chat. I am in questions in questions and answers. So if you want to say something, please, if you could say it in Q&A, which is top of your screen. Did you show them more pictures than brainstorm the possible stories than you choose one picture from anyone? Or do you show them only one? No, 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 no. We we actually, we, we go through all the pictures. We, we just go through one picture like we did today, like with you. Uh, that's why I was doing it. I, I mean, I would have liked it more interactive because I like my lessons to be more interactive. And in fact, I like uh, not saying a lot. I like participants and, and students to do all the talking. But uh, what we do is I show them pictures like we did the burning house. And then we come up with one liners. Firstly, what the story is about. Then we think of one liners. And then we go to the next one. And then we go to the next one and we do exactly the same thing. We do it with three pictures, four pictures, sometimes with all pictures, depending on time, depending on how, how they're motivated, if they like it, if they don't. <laughs> That's very nice, Susanna. I hope that it works well. But I, as I said, like I, I, I have a relatively extensive experience with teaching and uh, I must say I try, I try so many things. And this really, like for me, what works really best is it doesn't matter which step you take, but I don't know your experience, how you teach uh, students. But for me, what really works well is teamwork or pair work. Of course, if you have a wrong pair, you need to kind of change the pair. And again, as I said, like if you have students, some students just don't want to work and, and no matter what you do. But OK, forget about two, maybe three students, but the rest of the class works. Uh, what do you do if students, uh, for some reason, extremely passive? Well, uh, if they're extremely passive, um, firstly, uh, are they all passive? If they're all very passive, then I would try to see what makes them active. If they're all introverts, well, there's not much you can do. I'd say I have quite a few introverts in IT, but you wouldn't believe like I had today. I had a presentation. We're doing presentation. We're doing USA, preparing for Maturita. And I have a student. Uh, her English is just brilliant. She's fantastic. But she would not say anything in class. You, you hardly hear her speak. But when she has presentation, she has to speak. She's not looking at anyone because she's shy, but with the presentation, she, she speaks. So this is also very good when you actually share the information. Sometimes uh, the shy person hides behind the others. So you have to say, everybody has to say something. If all of them are shy and nobody says anything, well, then uh, you have a problem. I think this is, uh, I was trying to answer Katarina's question. I don't know if it helped. I have no questions, but I'm going to. <laughs> okay, thank you, Michaela. Uh, Zana, do you always manage to do? No, no, no. But then again, I mean, um, you know, I am very liberal about uh, the way I teach, meaning um, it's very 
like uh, I will be talking about this in my next seminar, I think, about motivating students. I I have I have uh, I'm very lucky that I teach students. For example, my first graders this year, we wrote a didactic ski test about two weeks ago, and all of them not only passed, but all of them passed with A first graders, which means I will be teaching them for four years. What am, I, what am I to teach them? They already can pass their maturita. So I can play around. So why, why do it within 45 minutes? I do it two, three, four lessons. Why not? Sometimes shorter, sometimes longer. You know, um, but if you have students and you, you teach in maybe vocational school where students are lower, lower level, level, again, think about the stories like, Almost any speaking, any topic, if you have food, imagine if you're talking about food, you know, if you have this topic food, uh, I always do speaking as much as possible. We do a lot of brainstorming with, you know, the vocabulary. And then I, I give them questions to talk about, like, you know, what was the best food you ever had? Or, or you know, which restaurant would you recommend? Okay. And when you do this, and this is, this is completely unrelated to story, but it's still storytelling because you are telling your experience with the restaurant, your experience with the food. And if you want to, you can incorporate story writing into it because you say, okay, fine, fine, fine. So you're talking now for about 15 minutes. Now write it. Even if you don't go through the grammar bit, it doesn't really matter. They're getting into the habit of writing. And when they do write it, it could be five, 10 sentences, you know, maybe 50 words, maybe 70 words, maybe 100 words. And when they do it, uh, I always emphasize the importance of the first liner, because if they get the first liner, I, I usually, uh, my experience is that the story reads much, much better than if they start somewhere and then there's a kind of progression, but I don't know what I'm reading. I don't know why I'm reading it. So so this is what I do. And, and it could be, as I said, any, we could be talking about anything else. You know, my experience is going to cinema. I'm sure you have had good experience, bad experience, somebody not turning up, my ticket, something, and they can write a story about it. And we're talking about culture. Okay. So you could, you could, you could put it, uh, you could, you could practice it in almost any lesson. Um, so 45 minutes, no, you can, you can do it. You can spend more time with it. Have you ever tried to develop a cartoon story with students? Yes, I have. I think it's fantastic, but it takes takes time. Sometimes you can do, uh, I know my, my colleague does that and I want to try it because I haven't tried it and I have IT students and that is voiceover. So they can create a story like, you know, getting some clips, short clips of things from the video, uh, from, from internet and then actually creating their own story. I think that is fantastic. It's a brilliant idea that my colleague suggested and I'm definitely going to try it as soon as possible. Because again, for me, it's to motivate students to work, to speak, to any experience with online tools. Like, story. no, I'm sorry. No, I am an old fossil. I'm sorry. I'm relatively old. So I don't have any experiences with this, but um, I'm sure, you know, uh, you know, I, I think it's always uh, try to do what students want to do. I, my experience is try to do what students want to do. Meaning, you know, if they if they know how to use storyboard, I'm I'm sorry, I don't know the online tool story storyboard. But if they know how to do it, if they know how to create it, you know, um, you just just uh, you know get students do, to do it. Uh, this is this is the reason why we generate the topics and and thing because I I always try to do try to do something that is close to the students world if you like my world is different to their world if i want them to talk about my world they will never be as motivated as if they're actually talking about their world and so you know if these are the uh, technological tools that they they are happy to use they are used to using you know then uh, get them use it if not well then see how it works and if it works um for you then then but i'm sorry no experience with it okay so i can't see any more questions so ah, there is something written here yes 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 very good Berta. 
Yes, I, I, I actually didn't speak about this, but this is something I also do. Uh, you said uh, the sequence of four. I don't know if, it, if all of us can see it, but to spice up their stories, I give them a sequence of four to five pictures and then assign students various endings. Example, two, three of them should finish with a happy ending, others with unusual ending, tragic ending, surprising ending. Yes, uh, that, that is a very good idea. I don't do it this way, uh, but uh, what I also do, I have like cards of uh, very strange pictures like like Dixit or something like that. And we, we play the story of, well, I had this very strange dream and we get pictures and uh, usually we do it again in, in, in groups. So I have, uh, I have like four, five sets of these cards. I give it to them and they're like, I don't know, about 30 cards and they go through them and they, they pick them, the, the cards are face down. So they have no idea what comes and they have to incorporate it and they're creating really wild dream. And again, they're kind of getting into the habit of speaking, trying to create story. And once we finish this, so it's a, that's a kind of warm up exercise. Then I actually tell them, okay, well, you know, look at all the pictures and then uh, pick something like four or five pictures, and from these pictures create a story. Of course, each team selects different pictures, therefore their story is completely different. So there are lo lo lots of variations of this. So thank you, Berta, for, for this input. And you can do it without pictures. You know, one person says something, the other one has to continue the story, and, and uh, it's kind of like a chain story. I think it's always also good for students to do. Alrighty, look, I, I don't know if there, uh, if, if you still have uh, some questions, I mean, I, I suspect you will not, but if you have questions, um, I don't know if you have my email, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure you can get the email from uh, MPE. Uh, if, if not, I, I can tell them to share it uh, with you and you can, you can always contact me, but I think, I think we all you know, uh, we all know what we're doing. And this is this is more. It, I I prefer actually face to face because then we can share more. Yeah, because at the moment it's like me saying something. You're not really don't have the space to to you know the opportunity to to give feedback. And we could build like you know with a bit of brainstorming and and uh, sharing, which which I I, I like. But um, anyway, so uh, thank you for being here. I hope it was um, useful in some ways. Uh, if not, well, then uh, I hope, uh, you know, if it was, then I hope to see you maybe one day again. If not, well, have a nice life and uh, I wish you all the best. Okay, so thank you very much.